In this video, I want to give you a list of formulas that you need to know if you're currently studying stoichiometry in your college chemistry class. So one of the first things you need to be able to do is you need to know how to calculate the number of moles and also the mass in grams. The mass in grams is equal to the moles multiplied by the molar mass. Of course, I like to do a simple conversion to get the answer, but here's the formula for those of you who prefer to use that. So M is the mass, N is the number of moles, and the molar mass, I like to use MW, so you don't confuse that with molarity, which is usually capital M. I like to use MW for molecular weight. Now, if you need to calculate the moles, the moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass or the molecular weight. So those are two formulas that you may want to be familiar with if you're studying stoichiometry. And remember, one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So if you think of a dozen, a dozen is 12. So if you have a dozen eggs, you have 12 eggs. If you have a dozen calculators, you have 12 calculators. If you have one mole of textbooks, you have six times 10 to the 23 textbooks. So a mole is simply just a way to represent a large quantity of something. In this case, like atoms and molecules. Now, the next thing you need to know is percent yield. In order to calculate the percent yield, you need to take the actual yield and divide it by the theoretical yield, and then multiply that by 100%. I do have a video that explains how to calculate the percent yield. For those of you who want some practice problems on that, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. Now, sometimes you may need to calculate percent error. This is not as common as percent yield in a typical chemistry class, but if you do need to calculate it, here's the formula. Percent error is actual minus the theoretical, but it's really the absolute value of that difference. So whether you subtract A by T or T by A, you're still going to get a positive result if you place it within uh, the absolute value symbol. So it's the actual yield minus the theoretical yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100%. So that's how you can calculate percent error. Now, when dealing with percent composition problems, you need to know how to calculate the mass percent of an element. The mass percent of an element is going to be the mass of that element divided by the total mass of the compound multiplied by 100%. So that's mass percent. There's also something known as volume percent. It's going to be the volume of the element or substance divided by the total volume times 100%. So that's how you can calculate mass percent and if needed, volume percent. The mass percent formula is going to be very useful when dealing with problems such as empirical formula determination. You know, that's where you'll typically use it as well. Now, for those of you who are studying solution stoichiometry, you need to know how to calculate the concentration. The concentration is going to be equal to the moles divided by the volume. Now, there are different forms of concentration out there, but the first one that you most likely encounter is molarity. So this concentration is the molarity. You can write this formula as capital M is equal to N over V. 
it's equal to the number of moles divided by the volume in liters. Now remember, one liter is a thousand milliliters. So if you're given the volume in milliliters, let's say if you have 540 milliliters, to convert that to liters, simply divide by a thousand. And this would be 0.54 liters. Also, one kilogram is a thousand grams, and one gram is a thousand milligrams. So, in the event that you're given the mass in milligrams and you need to convert it to grams, divide by a thousand. 350 milligrams is 0.35 grams. But whenever you need to calculate the molarity, it's moles over volume. If you need to calculate the moles, it's going to be the molarity times the volume. Now, when dealing with dilution problems, this formula will be useful. M1V1 is equal to M2V2. And we know that the molarity times volume is the moles. So let's say if you have a solution and you add water to it. The volume is increasing, but the moles of substance or solute in that solution stays the same. So that's why these two can equal each other. But as the volume of the solution goes up, the concentration of that solute goes down. So typically, you would use this formula when dealing with dilution problems. So that's basically it for this video. So those are the most common formulas that you're going to encounter if you're currently studying stoichiometry. Now, for those of you who want to put these formulas into good use, I do have a video on that's entitled How to Solve Stoichiometry Problems. It's basically a, a long practice test that covers problems like percent yield, uh, doing gram-to-gram -gram conversions, uh, empirical formula determination, and things like that, even uh, percent composition problems too. So I'm going to post that video in the description section below. It's entitled How to Solve Stoichiometry Problems. I also have another video on dilution problems and solution stoichiometry. And in those videos, it'll explain how you could use uh, this formula, M1V1 equals M2V2, on, you know, after dilution has occurred or something like that. So feel free to check out those videos in uh, the description section below, and thanks for watching.